Okay, my volume is okay now. Yeah, yeah, it's fine, sir. So. Okay, shall we begin? Yeah, I think no, we're live. I, I will be sharing my screen first. Oh, no, no. Okay. Uh, yeah, we'll like we'll we'll proceed with this, sir. Yes. I'll like do it for you. No problem. Okay, okay. So that. Yeah. Okay. So hello, everyone. Uh, good evening to all attendees who have joined us today in uh, today's webinar, and I welcome you all to the webinar on artificial intelligence and machine learning using Python, organized by Institute of Engineering Research and Publication. Uh, good evening, sir. Thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, before we proceed further, I'd like to you know introduce you. So this is Dr. Paras Nath Singh, President, ICT CS Section, Indian Science Congress 2020-21. He's currently working as a professor in CSE department in CMRIT Bangalore. Sir has 36 years of experience, which includes industry, 19 years as technical officer in government undertaking, guest faculty, and research. With teaching, he has 17 years experience as assistant professor, associate professor, professor, head of department, dean, vice principal, principal, and director of different engineering colleges of Odisha, Andhra Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, and Karnataka. Some of his achievements include uh, topper of California University, Santa Cruz, 100% marks in C++ for C programmers course by Coursera, sponsored by CMRIT. He's also won the National Award for Best Professor in Computer Science and Engineering by Golden AIM Awards for Excellence in Leadership in Education. And he's also got the International Award of Most Fabulous Pro Professor by World HRB Congress 2020. Sir has filled two patents and authorized three books and several research paper publications in reputed journals. His research in interests include OOPS, Object Oriented Design, Image Processing, Mutant Functions, Big Data Analytics, and Machine Learning Using Python. So welcome, sir. Uh, would you like to speak a few words before we begin? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, OK, so first I will have to also say that uh, welcome, everybody, global. Yeah. I'm Dr. P. N. Singh here. And if little bit, if little bit, I'm begging my apologies. So for some is voice is breaking. Let it be. Let it be some of the Internet problem or others. So that first time begging my apologies. Anyway, the all the recordings will be forwarded to you, and uh, uh, I will request uh, uh, Nisha. Yes, sir. Uh, so uh, you will be sharing the screen. That's okay. But hmm. before that, can I share my screen for one minute just to bounce the ball of the presentation today? Your screen, your presentation, sir. No, no. I I want to share my screen for five minutes. Yeah, yeah, sure, no problem. It's already actually the speaker screen is up, sir. Uh, so uh, I will be doing the screen on. Hmm. Okay, we can. Yeah. It, is, it is not like that something. Uh, it is just beginning or you can say that bouncing the ball means in basketball field, you know. So that hmm. is what of the uh, my one, two programs, how it is doing the uh, the speech recognition and uh, natural language processing. So for that, you give me five minutes only. Yes, sir, sure, sure, no problem. OK, fine. Yeah. And we will be responding a little bit if the streaming of voice is breaking. I have hmm. already the apologies for that. So sure. turning in on first. Yeah. Shri Ganesha. So it is the Russian girls dance. In between pausing that, 
uh, what about the audio nishan yes sir uh, the audio is it's going on sir no problem okay good hmm. so i have taken 5 minutes permission from you no no problem actually that i have coded this one uh, to recognize my voice one and for the natural language processing two things of the artificial intelligence uh, as uh, it is dedicated to lord ganesha for any of the program casted anyway i want to just to display for two minutes more for that uh, sufi song so there will not be anything that why you have displayed that only okay so that was only again i have saved my 2 minutes just to save that starting with that now again so in which way that my uh, not only this natural language processing so in which way so first i will go for that how it is recognizing my hindi voice also so dikhao so it is by default is opening uh, my college website the, the principal uh, figure first so it is recorded they are fine so that is one and finally one more one minute more
Hello. Uh, yes, now. Yes, sir. We can proceed. It's okay. Everything is okay. Uh, yes, everything is okay. So that you are first. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. You can turn your video on also. Uh, just now you are seeing me. Uh, sorry for hmm. the service. I don't know, but just uh, I will not. Uh, I don't know how many seconds or how many minutes they have seen, but you can start. Okay. Yeah, it's already. It's already. It's, it's already begins here. So we just continue. Okay, okay, fine. Yeah, you were showing something for the video. It's okay now, or we yeah. like. No, no, then we start now. We can start now. Yeah, okay. yes. So then we like start with the presentation. Fine. So that I will start sharing my screen, or you are presenting. For yeah, me. I'll begin it for you, and then you can right. control it, sir. Like you okay, can. Okay. Okay. So again, yeah. welcome again, and uh, all the participants of this global webinar on artificial intelligence and machine learning using Python. So in the beginning, again, I will have to say that I am sorry for that for the inconvenience to all the participants. And what I wanted to show from my screen, I have already shown. And it is having 100 plus slides. So uh, that Nisha, can you tell me that what will be any time limitation that I will have to conclude before 8.30 or 8.15? Yeah, within, within 8.30, sir. 8.30, fine. Yeah. So Move to the next slide. Yes, sir. So I am thankful to IFERP giving me opportunity to present this one. And what these slides will have, uh, I have already told that in first one, uh, this uh, uh, this is speech recognition which comes under artificial intelligence. And uh, I will be moving to the next slide. And here, these are the contents of this presentation. Uh, that is the Python and its powerful tools because the thousands of people are watching it. So it all of the persons may not be awareness of the basics of Python, but I have taken some interesting and crucial things of Python for that 10 slides and including the shell and data structure, some crucial programs and data science, big data. This big data, I can skip uh, five, six slides because the big data was not the topic. And this prediction and forecast model, what I have represented to the different universities, uh, how the data, what they are presenting to the newsrooms, uh, in which way they are predicting this forecast model, and it is not satisfying any of the regression criteria. Uh, because they were forecasting on the number of days, not number of testings per day increased. And the artificial intelligence, the basics, the steps, different types, machine learning, and finally implementing all those things in Python. And beginning and ending with the speech recognition, that beginning already I have done. So here, so it is already done that simple. I have told the Dikhao in Hindi, but again, I have told the www.facebook.com. So it is a small code, but powerful code. And you must have these Python tools installed in your Python, the speech recognition tool, the web browser tool, and from that SR dot recognizer, it will recognize your voice. And I just I have taken one condition: if the this P, the Google Adio, if it is equivalent to the cow, then it will by default CMRIT dot AC dot in. Or if it is another also even the CMRIT dot AC dot in, it will be open that particular web page. So by single speech recognition, you can open any of the web page. One. And second, what I have shown that how a natural language processing is done to open the different sites of the U2 that we have already shown. And that will be the last slide again. But first, I will have to conclude. So first, from the artificial intelligence, the speech recognition one welcome slide I have already shown. Now moving to the next slide. So when you are uh, hearing the word this Python and Anaconda, so in general, in general, this anaconda is the heaviest or Python is the uh, longest snake of the world. And this you are finding from the Wikipedia. And again, question, uh, questions are haunting in the mind that how this uh, they have kept this pro particular programming language or this anaconda uh, freemium. Uh, sometimes the computer architects are also using the word freemium so that it is freely available on the net and how the Anaconda Navigator is working and having the built-in 
Python R and Jupyter Notebook and Jupyter Lab also. For that reason, nobody is asking the question that why you have kept this weird name, the Python Anaconda. Even in the 2017 June, they have developed one pandas for big data analytics. Even it is not having the official logo, but it is accepted by the Python group. And for that, I have taken this slide, what is Anaconda and what is Python uh, uh, in terms of a snake, in terms of this freemium and programming language. Moving to the next slide. So here Python developed by this Guido Van Rossum in first release came in 1991 and Python 2 came in 2000. And better to understand when the different programming languages are coming and after 20 or 30 years, the programming languages were dying from the market, but the growth of Python, you will be seeing that in last five years, it has defeated all the growth of other programming languages, even the Java, JSP.net. And because it is core philosophy of the Python is beautiful, is better than ugly. Explicit is better than implicit. The implicit call of the function or explicit. Simple is better than complex and complex is better than complicated. Readability counts. So it enhances the readability of the program. The program is written in the simple way and it has the rich, powerful tools. The pandas they have given for the data analytics developed in 19, uh, sorry, 2017, 2017, June. And it is very good package, but this logo is not official logo. And you can upload your semi-structured databases converting to the CSV file comma separated value and you can do the big data analytics on this particular data sets. So Pandas is very powerful tool for the data analytics. And here I have given, developed this particular picture also that if you are taking the Python, it is not the logo, logo is here, but uh, in that sense that it can swallow everything for that in which way, uh, if it is related to the data analytics, the data, the filtering, the visualization and a story, and finally it is able to do everything. And it has the rich set of libraries as well as the various windowing systems. Even the speech recognition, artificial intelligence, big data, machine learning, everything we can do in Python. So yes, these are the features of the Python. And if you are not able to install the Python, if your desktop or laptop is not having the Python, I have given here some ways, steps, how to install the Python libraries, only installing the Python from python.org. So the rest of the tools you will have to install going in the scripts folder where your Python 3 or python.ex is there. Moving from there, scripts folder, and then you will have to issue the command pip install numpy, pip install matplotlib, pip install pandas, and for machine learning, pip install scikit-learn, and pip install a speech recognition. Take care that in the speech recognition, I was importing the speech hyphen recognition, but the tool name is not having the space or hyphen. And for all those things, you can install Anaconda distribution for Python 3, IPython, Jupyter Notebook, and other built-in tools, other programming language, even the R is also there in Anaconda Navigator. I have already kept it open so you can see that Anaconda Navigator is having this much thing now. So why Python we will be using for the artificial intelligence? Because it is having the less size of the code. It is platform independent. It is running on the windowing operating system also and the Linux Unix based operating system also. And it is having the rich set of built in libraries, ease of learning, and it is massive community support. For that reason, Python is accepted globally for artificial intelligence, for big data and machine learning. Uh, here, uh, I think it is less visible to you or what see the growth of the Python, the other programming languages. It has reached to the Java JSP.net in last seven years, it is the growth of the Python. It is an open source object oriented programming language, mainly used for data science. So I would like to give some 
some of the powerful tools for this machine learning and other useful libraries like TensorFlow, um, the scikit-learn, the NumPy for mathematical, what you are getting the MATLAB support for the mathematical operations regarding arrays and matrices. You can do everything in NumPy and it is also required for the plots. So Theano for features of Theano, it is given here, the integrated with the NumPy and transparent use of GPU extensive unit testing and self verification. Keras runs smoothly both on CPU and GPU, supports all types of neural networks and completely Python based. And NLP. NLP here, it is name of the tool is Natural Language Analysis with NLTK. For that, I have also downloaded and I have shown that. And even uh, the Twitter handle for sentiment analysis and uh, tokenizing all those strings and taken in the tokens. And if it is giving the more than 70% accuracy, you can do the sentiment analysis using the machine learning algorithm. And the scikit-learn is usually for the machine learning. So these are the tools. I will not wait here for now. From here, because the, if everybody is using the Python, so I have used just one one slide, few slides, so that in which way this sine and cos wave, the sine and cosine wave can be generated by the smaller code. So I have imported here NumPy as NP. So NP will be the name of the object of this NumPy package and import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. So I will be using plt for this particular package and it is np.arrange and I have taken np.numpy.arrange. Here steps are given a start, a stop and a step. So it will start from zero to four multiplied by pi value and in each step it will be incremented by 0.1 and then you are taking that sign x value not to confuse her. It is not taking the directly degree. It is taking the radian and cos also. And then you are furnishing a plot, the x, y and x, z and showing it. And it is showing the output. So you can code and execute. Now, how to code this program? If you have saved it as sign cos dot pipe, from there only you can run it by run menu F5 at the shortcut key or on the Python prompt, you can write exe for execute, open to open the file in memory sign cos.py. And as you have given the dot read, so automatically the program will be executed. On operating system prompt, directly want to execute. So if it is the windowing prompt, then first you are giving the Python. So Python will be running. The Python program is associated with Python. So Python will run it. Even you are running on the Unix prompt, dollar prompt, there also in Python folder you are giving Python and this program file name it is giving. The another tip is that so you can run it by import and program file name also. So again, in between that I will be asking the coordinator Nisha so that I am audible to you, Nisha. Please respond. My voice is not breaking now, or I will go a little slower. If it is possible, anybody can respond. Fine. So now uh, the another crucial things of the Python. See for what that if I want to say that uh, one very good feature is the data structure list tuple and dictionary. So we can have the list comprehension also. So list comprehension also simple in simple code. It has been given here. The list is surrounded within a square bracket X for X in the range 11. So by default before 11, 0 to 1 already is stored in a list and a list is the data structure having the different data types. Now, if you have taken just extended it, that 102, that range you have taken a starting range one and 100 and in each step it will be incrementing by two. So you are printing the odd list one to 100, all the odd numbers. The good thing here, the leap years, the leap years, you will not have to write one page program. You are just giving the logic in a list, list comprehension. So why for here year variable name is taken, 
why for why in a range 1890 to 2090 especially i have taken because the general concept is there that if year is divided by 4 it is a leap year but if it is a century year it must be divided by 400 also so 1900 is already divided by 4 but since it is a century year so it must be divided by 400 also for that this list comprehension is written the range is given here if y percentage for double equal to 0 it is equality test operator double equal to single equal to will be assignment operator and the logical operator both of the condition must be satisfied if y percentage 100 not equal to 0 if it is not a century year or now and is evaluated first then or and then if it is century year if y percentage for double equal to 0 if year is divided by 400 and remainder is zero then it is a leap year then it is printing the leaps you will not see that 1900 is not there even divided by 4 and 2000 is there because it is divided by 400 also so it was the list comprehension for the leap year i want to anybody please respond in the middle that nisha or jazila are you listening me first my audio is okay or i will be little slower please anyone is responding me anyone please respond are you listening me okay so i'm moving to the next slide so it is the another list comprehension which is from which is for prime numbers from 2 two or 2 to 1000 so it is given here 2 to 1000 and in which way in one line of code it is written it will display all the prime numbers if you are giving here 1 lakh also so it will display all the prime numbers from 2 to 1 lakh i have given the list comprehension code here that if it is not divided by y y is divided y is divided and the range of y is 2 to a square root of x 2 to a square root of x plus 1 because the range is working just before the last range and hello yes sir you're audible sir fine 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 so it is a little bit slower it is going good it's going good sir it's it's normal no problem fine fine, fine. so that if i am explaining the code now so because the new users of python will be there for that i am taking sometimes the one minute extra time so the list comprehension feature and it is the powerful uh, facility you can say that utility in the python so for one page of program can be replaced by one list comprehension and within the square bracket you are writing x for x in the range from 2 to 1000 Yes, the range is range of number is from two to one thousand, and now finally checking any or all, any or all clause will work if the divider is y. If it is divided by y, then it is not a prime number, and it is ranging from two to a square root of x. There is no need to check that how many factors are there of a number. If the number is divided by one and number itself it is a prime number, if it is not divided by others. so we will not have to check up to the last so starting from 2 to a square root of the number and if it is not divisible it is a prime number so it is displaying next now very interesting program world level most complex most complex in which we am telling that the complexity is here in the order of 2 to the power n the exponential complexity program to solve the problem of tower of hanoi the in the childhood you must be i have also some of you may have playing this particular game how to transfer because there are three pegs i am not telling now towers there are, there are three pegs and the three one peg and we will have to move all this left peg disk to the right most peg and but there are two conditions that we will have to move one disk at a time 
and it will not have to keep a larger disk on a smaller one. I repeat the two conditions. One disk at a time and we will not have to keep a larger disk on a smaller one. The middle one peg is auxiliary peg or we can say it middle peg. ABC name is given of the pegs and the steps are coming in that way. First move disk one from left to right, move disk two from left to middle, move disk one from right to middle, move disk third, move disk three from left to right. Again, move disk one from middle to left, move disk two from middle to right, and move disk one from left to right. So for three diskets, I'm using the word diskets. So three diskets, like they're using the word cassette, no? So disket also we can use. So for three diskets, it is taking the seven movements. The seven movements it is taking for three diskets. And if it is four diskets, then it is taking 15 movements. If it is five diskets, then it is taking 31 movements. If it will be six, then two to the power six minus one, that is 63. If it is seven, then 128 minus one, 127 movements. So one mythology I want to share. The name is given here Tower of Hanoi, but it is also known as Tower of Brahma by the research scholars. The Lord Brahma has given the seven disket, sorry, this three golden pegs and 64 diskets to seven monks. And he has told that you will have to move all the diskets to rightmost peg. And when you will be completing this work, that will be the end of the world, the day of calamity. For that reason, and it is might only, yes, it is might only, so that if it is having the 64 disks, so it will be taking how many moves? Two to the power 64 minus one. If you are counting one disk is moved in one second, then how many times it will take? How much time it will take? So that one disk in one second, then total two to the power 64 minus one. So finally, you will be finding that if it is one movement is taking one second, then it will take not less than 65 billion years to move all the disks. Then why they have given the name of the Tower of Hanoi? So it is also a might, it is not like that some Saulian temples and having the three towers and the hundred disks are inserted because the French people has invaded the Hanoi. It is, I think, near the Vietnam and there the tower of Hanoi it was very tough to win and to wash their flag. For that, they have given the name of this tower of Hanoi problem and it is world famous problem and all the programmers in first year and second year of engineering or MCA, they are trying to solve this and the recursive solution is given in the Python with the output. So moving to the next slide. So now again, something about the data science. So now data science having the statistical function and it is including the machine learning, data mining and this big data analytics, natural language processing. So all the scope of, of the new generation is coming in the data science data science for the next 10 years, you will not say that data science is a programmer or not. If it is a data scientist, he or she must be a programmer. He or she is a programmer, then he or she must be data scientist also. So these words will be recorded for the future coming for the 10 years for the data scientist only in all the fields and not only the IT, the ITES field also because it includes many things. Now, starting statistics in Python, so I will not give more time than that you have taken some list in Python, you are finding the length and you are divide, finding the average. For this average mean and sum, I will not take more time. Everybody is understanding what do you mean by mean. But here, some statistics tool is also there, package is also there. So directly you can compute the mean and I know how to compute. We know that how to compute the average of all the marks. So the statistical, I will statistical, the starting statistics in Python, the statistics in Python, we will be moving a little bit faster. So whether it is descriptive statistics, because a list may have some of the null value also, what we are calling a math dot none. And if you are finding some of the string also, because it is collection of heterogeneous data type. So some of the values are having the character string or floating point value, then how we will find the average? 
how it will find the aggregate function like some mean for that reason so in which way it is telling it is not a number nan stands for not a number but if you are giving that np importing the numpy and then you are telling that nan mean then it is finding mean by dividing by 9 not counting this particular value if it is weighted average mean suppose you are giving here the internal assessment terminal marks 83 and university exam is 76 the final marks are computed in which way the 40 marks 40% weightage for the internal marks and 60% weightage for the university marks in this pandemic. So how to compute that? It is given here and that we will calling the weighted average mean. And in which way it is printing? The 0.2F. So it resembles the C programming style also. So you are giving here format of that particular marks in which way it will be displayed. So it is saying here, that what you are going to display the floating point value and it is the uh, that number of digits after decimal will be two and if the any of the digit any of the digit after decimal if it is five or greater that will be rounded up to the next digit and it is displaying here the final mark again that you have the list of marks of six papers of any student and university marks you have got this one so how will be computing your final score internal marks i have got these in 100 and university marks i have got these in 100 then it is having the weightage of 40 percent and it is having the weightage of 60 percent in that way i have computed finally and running a loop and here i in range and divided by length of the university marks and final score it is displaying in that way and the paper score it is showing for all the all the respected papers you have got 67 in internal and 54 in external so your final marks will be 59.2 in that paper if it is not having the ceiling value then it can be rounded then it can be rounded up to the next integer but exact the floating point marks is displayed here for all the respective six papers anything you want to say something? Hello. Yes, please. Yes, sir. Tell me, sir. No, no, I have heard some of that. I have paused. Yeah, yeah, nothing. So you can carry on. Fine. Yeah. So that, that internal marks here, the university marks, the final marks, how to compute, it is giving here and printing that IAT multiplied by four university marks and then final marks also having the list directly, it is computed. And then you can keep the mean, then you can compute the mean of the final marks. NP, I am not writing everywhere, import NumPy as NP. So NP is having this feature, NumPy. By that, we can calculate, compute the uh, this weighted mean. The another is harmonic mean. The reciprocal of the mean of the reciprocal of all the items. The mathematician formula is given here, where I is equal to 1 to N, and N is the number of items in the data set. One variant of the pure Python implementation of the harmonic mean is that. So in which way it is computed? Length of X here divided by sum one by item for item in X. So how many items it is computed harmonic mean? It is the built-in statistics module. If you have imported the statistics module, automatically it will compute the harmonic mean of that particular data set. And if you have a NAND value in the data set, then it will return NAN, not a number. If there is at least one zero, then it will return zero because all the numbers here divided by zero, no? So that will have a problem for to compile by the Python compiler. The geometric mean is the nth root of the product of all elements. The mathematician definition of geometric mean is given and it is computed here, the geometric mean in the Python. How it is computed and Python 3.8 introduced automatically the 3.8 version of Python, the statistics dot geometric mean to compute directly. So here we have find again in that way one by length of X, what you have got the mean multiplied by item or G mean have taken one and again G mean multiplied by equal to items. So all the items will be multiplied by G mean and finally it is power to, it is given here to power to 
1 by length of x. So 1 by length of x, it is 5. So g mean double asterisk is the exponentials, exponentiation symbol to get the power of the g mean and is computed. The median is the middle value. The median is the middle value if it is having the odd number of elements or even number of elements. Median is the middle value. So if you are debating for that middle position is 0 0.5 multiplied by n plus 1. So if it is n is even, then the median is the arithmetic mean of two values in the middle. That is the item at the position 0 0.5 n and 0 0.5 n plus 1. So if it is having the even value, which one is the median value? Suppose the total numbers in the data set are a 8, then fourth value and fifth value. It is given here the 0 0.5 multiplied by n and 0 0.5 multiplied by n plus 1. Increase and decrease in value will affect the mean but not the median. Median is the middle value. Directly, if it is having the odd number of elements in the data set, directly the middle value will be the median value. If it is having the even number, in which way it will be computed, you know that. For that one function is written here, find median data set you have already sorted. Sorted means directly by default in ascending order, finding the length. And if it is n percentage to double equal to zero, by default double equal to one, then it is this one, else you are recomputing the data set by this way. The mode is data set that occurs most frequently. How many data have been uh, repeated more times in the data set? See here, in this data set, the two, the two has repeated, TWO2 has repeated two times and other have repeated once. So this two is repeated two times. So in which way it will be displaying that this particular data has repeated more number of times. That is the mode. The sample mode is the value in the data set that occurs most frequently. So mean, and I have given their, <coughs> sorry, this uh, uh, geometric mean, weighted mean, harmonic mean, median and mode. Now, here we will take little bit more time for the variance and standard deviation. So in which way, in uh, in a single sentence, if I can define that, what do you mean by variance? So it is variances or madam, it is variances that uh, how much uh, the data sets are far from the mean. The individual data items are how much far from the mean and in which way we can define the standard deviation. The standard deviation, it is the degree of variance for each data set. The mathematician has given this formula how this is the symbol for the standard deviation, how to compute it. So the sum of the formula is given. So it is divided by n. The loop is running from 1 to n. And you know that all the individual data items minus mean of the data, we are finding the square. Finally, the sum of all those data and divided by n and finding the square root. If you are not finding the square root, it is variance only because the standard deviation is a square root of the variance. But here n minus 1 is given and n minus 1 is given. And both the formula are correct. n minus 1 has been given by Bessel's correction. If you are computing the sample data, then divide by n minus 1. If it is a big data set, then you can directly divide by n. So in generally to the classroom, we are teaching the student if you are taking the sample data, so divide the n minus 1. And here it is implemented. So in variable of that is standard deviation, finding the length, how many data are there in the data set. And mean, the sum x minus, yes, mean you have calculated. And variance, item minus mean is square for all the items divided by n minus 1. Finally, a standard deviation is the square root of the variance. You can understand here that if it is the exponentiation operator, exponentiation operator, if it is 0 0.5, means anything raised to the power 0 0.5 is the square root. And finally, it is displaying that what is the standard deviation of 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Why we are using in management also this standard deviation? Suppose the three students are in the group. 
the three students have the average same because one student has got two marks only in 100, the another has got 98 and the third one has got 100. So the 100, 98 and let us say 50, third one has got 50. So 250 and 98, their average is also 50 because 2 plus 98 plus 50, 150 divided by 3 will be 50. So their average is also 50. The another segment of students, three students getting the marks 48, 50 and 52. Their average is also 50. So then how we will compute that which one is good, which one the segment of students are good. So that second segment, the 48, 50 and 52 because their marks are nearer to the mean. And that is the standard deviation. The standard deviation is degree of variance with the average. <coughs> now random generator. The random, we know that we know that the random number is generated by any of the programming language and it is very useful for the scientist or for any lottery that take a random number for the lottery who is getting that particular chance but is giving by default 0 to 1 any value from 0 to 1. So here if you have imported the numpy and np.random.rand it is giving any value from 0 to 1. You can see here that after decimal how many digits it is displaying because the Python is not having the peculiar data type to declare in the beginning. What the data you have initialized internally, it will decide internally, it will decide its type and size. So, but if you want the random number is given the shape that here the two rows and three columns. So it is displayed here all the random numbers between two in two rows and three columns. Okay, fine. The standard normal distribution, but here, that if I have been told that the 40% of this 40 is 16 and internally we will have to give the 40 mark, uh, mark we will have to score the marks, the students will have to score the internal marks uh, in 40 and if internally, indirectly, if you are having that mindset that nobody will get less than 40%, so you can get a random number from 16 to 40. Any random number it can give you what you have given the range. Like that, if you are giving some floating point value, floats in the half of an intervals, so it will be nearer to that. First number is given here near to 98, but rest of the numbers will be nearer to half of that particular number. So this way also we can say that random numbers can be generated by NumPy and it is the built-in feature of the Python also writing directly the import random. The sum of the statistical functions are checked here that whether the distribution is normal or the distribution is not normal, whether the distribution of the number is symmetric or not. For that, you can check the skewness, which of the data is having the more curve. Here is the mode, mean and median. If all the three values are coming here this way, so we can say that positive skewness means when the tail of the right side of the distribution is longer. Negative skewness, when the tail of the left side is distribu distribution is longer or fatter than the tail of the right side. A symmetric distribution will have the skewness of zero. So here you have taken the three, four or five numbers and computing the skewness. The skewness formula is given here, how to compute and finally displaying the skewness. It is 1.913 for all these. Like that again, the kurtosis all about the tails of the distribution. So whether it is the mesocortic or leptocortic or platocortic. So formula is given here, definition is given here, not formula. So in the next slide, the formula and Python application is given how to display the kurtosis itself first. How to display the, because the formula is given here and that is implemented in the Python. So you can enjoy that all the statistical function, not only the mean, mode, median, and even the mean harmonic and geometric and weighted mean, <coughs> even the very high statistical function because the data science it is required, which includes the artificial intelligence and machine learning also. One of the new feature came before five years, 
I, I don't know because I can say personally transparently that uh, five years before I was not also having this particular concept and I was asking the math professors also what is this confusion matrix the confusion matrix so some of the algorithm has given this particular result and their algorithm is giving this result so how to measure that which of the things are giving the better result for that the actual value and the predicted value and we have divided in the matrices of negative and positive so it is negative negative true negative negative positive false positive here positive negative false negative and positive positive true positive so it this side it is actual and this side it is predicted and how to compute the accuracy a person who is actually infected positive is corona infected or not classified as infected then it is true positive a person is actually not infected negative and classified not infected yes it is true negative a person is not actually infected but classified as infected then it is false positive a person who is actually infected but classified as not infected then it is false negative and how the accuracy is computed true negative plus true positive whole divided by true negative plus false positive plus false negative plus true positive and how this true positive rate and true negative rate and precision and the computing all for 100 people we have 40 actual infected and 60 not infected but classified as this way so what will be the it is the assignment for the audience you can compute that what is the accuracy of those findings Coming to the next, I have taken one example here the, because it is Python now. So for that species, I have taken the example. The 25 biggest snakes are there, seven boa, and all are the species of the biggest snakes, eight anacondas and 10 pythons. Most probably Python is next. The confusion matrix of our recognition algorithm may look like that. You can say you have taken the multivariate, not only the two. So boa, anaconda, and python. So if we are having here seven boa, okay, six is classified, identified true, but one is identified wrongly as anaconda and one is identified wrongly as python. Like that, it is actual. It is here anaconda, the total numbers are eight, but okay, six identified truly anaconda, but two is wrongly identified as boa and one identified as python. And here it is Python and total 10 Pythons. So here one is predicted as Boa, one is predicted as Anaconda, and eight is predicted as Python. So the system correctly predicted six of eight actual Boas, but in two cases it took Boa for Anaconda. The seven actual Anacondas were correctly recognized in six cases, but one case has not into the Boa. And eight out of 10 cases had been correctly recognized, but in one case, Python had been taken as Boa and in one case, an Anaconda. All those correct predictions are written in diagonal of the table, six plus six plus eight, 20. So accuracy will be what? This 20, because this Boa, Boa, Anaconda, Anaconda, Python, Python. So all this true positive we have taken here 20 and 20 divided by 25, so we can say that 80% is the accuracy of that final confusion matrix. And one comment I have written from my side, the funny comment, probably this algorithm was not written in Python because Python should properly recognize its species. So again, we did the multi-class case, how to compute that precision of BOAS, how much correct it is, precision of Anaconda and precision of Python. And recall, and again, recall Anaconda and recall Python, the formula I have given already first in the previous slide, how the recall is, yes, here, yeah. recall is the true positive rate and true negative rate and positivity is this one. So then these big data slides I want to skip because uh, big data slides, why big data? Because the growth of unstructured data. I will take two minutes, three minutes for big data. For that, the growth of data these days are not for the conventional database like RDBMS or DBMS. 
the, where all the domain will have this similar type of data. Where I can see that any of the particular field written here, some numeric field, but the data is written in number also. And data sometimes it is written in characters also, let it be nine. So nine is written in number, but sometimes it is written in ni, any in characters. There may be web sound also nine and how to classify those semi-structured data set. For that big data analytics, big data it is not only for that, it is having the 3V, 4V, 5V, and now they are talking about the 6V also. There's volumous, veracity, velocity, variety, value, all those Vs. For that, actually I am accepting or I am sharing my depth so that big data first condition is that here it is having some semi-structured data. And in last decade, from 1990 to 2015, and it is given here, and this data is taken from, again, Meridian Corporation, now owned by Dell Electromagnetic Corporation. Uh, what is that? Something hidden here. So the growth of unstructured data, it is 44 jettabyte in seven years. So this way it is growing. And your normal database growth is this way, and unstructured or semi-structured database is growing in this way. So for that, big data comes in picture. So here the 3V or 4V or 5V or 6V, now we are discussing with the 6V of big data. I will not take, and why we are taking that? Cost reduction, better decision making, faster new product and services, and now again in Python, if you were to display some chart, so if you want to display some chart in Python, how to display? The bar chart is there. Marks you have already seen in the previous slides. Just display the bar chart of six chapter marks. What will be the title name? What will be the x-axis name? What will be the y-axis name? And directly it will be displaying the chart. If you are having the line chart, bar chart, so by default, when you are giving here plt dot bar, if you are giving here plt dot plt, plt dot here, so plt dot plot, so that it will be displaying the line chart, and other charts will be displaying by giving the name of the chart. I have taken the another data sets. I have taken sometimes represented that from April to thirtieth uh, April. So what were the data of the infected people in a particular town or particular state? And this way it was giving that this is the infection rate increasing. For that I have taken and finally that drawn that chart in which way it is going. So that here the base thing is was date, not the date in which way it is increasing. So that is date wise figure is okay. But here the increment of figure is not based on date. It is not machine learning. It is just date-wise data to display the positive infected cases. So like that, if you are taking some random value just to display the different series of data, you have taken the 1000 random numbers and which comes your range, you have taken 1, 1, 2000 periods, also 1000. So it will be divided in 1000 dates and times because the date field Having the give very good feature. So from 1 1 2000, if you are dividing the all the days in the periods, those all days will be subdivided in 1000 section, 1000 segment of times. By that, you are displaying here the uh, total of the size, uh, random numbers you have taken, not the actual number, and you are displaying the plot. Like that bar chart of the 60 student marks. It is showing here, and if you have taken the range 1 to 61, like their USM or roll number 1 to 60, because it will take the range one before the last. And here you are taking the random integer only assuring there will not be less than 16 marks, there will not be more than 40 marks. And these are drawn. And then you can say, you can draw also the histograms, how many marks have come under what range. This is here the histogram for seeing that the same data in which way the in Jupyter notebook command is given here. 
and again density plot you can draw in which way the density plot for the series it has taken from pandas import pandas as pd and it is taking in series all the random numbers if you are taking this series in number numbers it is having only one set of data then what will be the indices by default the indices will automatically will be done for the series data type and the uh, primary data structure of python it has been given here how to read that particular file of excel and reading as csv result 4.csv checking it save and then seeing what are the field names of that particular data sets it is given here 20 rows and 9 columns and these are the indices means fields that is displayed here and i will be skipping these four five slides for the state was prediction from 1st april to 20th july i have done some analysis in which way the positive case of data was increasing and what is the role of the data science big data analytics to make the prediction to make the forecast so i will be skipping this one i will have to come directly to the artificial intelligence and the machine learning the code the data set is already given here and some of the slides for the months four months data set for COVID-19 in India in which way it has increased now the program is given whether we are taking the projecting the population growth one so it is good I think that what will be the population growth based on the back data previous data what will be the population growth in 2030 it is given an initial population size I have taken this one 138 crores and if it is growth rate per year is 1.09 then furnishing the data for 20 21 22 23 for all the years what will be projected data population for 2030 and it is given here the covid 19 samples now it is real collection that if total if the total positive cases for samples if you are testing the 5 crores people, then the positive cases. Now this figure is started to come. If the testing will be completed for 10 crore, then it will be. So for if 100 crore people will be tested, then 7 crore 29 lakhs 1192. So at that time we made this slogan. So it means that 7 crore people are moving on road with the corona. Because the number of test cases increases and they are telling that now peak has come so now starting again relax for the some of the basic things of the artificial intelligence why the demand of artificial intelligence because the subject is not introduced now because the new topic related to artificial intelligence is machine learning whether it is supervised unsupervised reinforcement or even the deep learning but this concept was initiated in artificial intelligence a speech recognition was also so more computational power better algorithm broad lip and earlier it was given the neural network also having some hidden layer to compute the predicted to compute the back propagated data and to compute the final production final prediction for that so mainly the i am taking the name with regard that john mccarthy has coined the term artificial intelligence in 1956 the science and engineering of making intelligent machines. So definition of artificial intelligence, I will not have to read it in which way it is given on the different sites. I have coined from there and here the machine learning is the part natural language processing, knowledge based, deep learning. Other things are there, the computer expert system. And the types of AI, it may be the narrow intelligence, general intelligence or super intelligence. And AI versus machine learning versus deep learning. So artificial intelligence is the super set of this machine learning also and deep learning also. So it is defined again what do you mean by machine learning and what do you mean by deep learning. 
like that. So what is machine learning again that you are taking the data, training in the machine, building a model and then predicting the outcome. Here the machine learning process, it is cyclic here that if any error comes again, so this way the cycle because why the brain figure it is given here because it is predicting some things by calculation whether it is back propagated data or using the different algorithm for the prediction model. So suppose it is the weather forecasting model that you are taking that weather will be sunny or rainy so that you are taking the back, back propagated data and from the back propagation you are finally defining that what will be the weather situation today. Gathering the data, finally cleaning the data, missing values, see that if any null values can be converted to the zero, if any value is not there, how we will be computing the average and mean, if some value is written, it is not of the similar type under the domain for preparing and cleaning the data. Final, the exploratory data analytics and then machine learning model you are building and model finally you are checking that which of the algorithm is giving the better result that you are taking. So I will be skipping this one also the basics and predictions I have kept intentionally blank in which way. So main types of machine learning I will take only three types here where it is given the machine learning problems are so many that hybrid learning problem is statistical interface and again it will be also subdivided in many types of this machine learning but mainly three supervised unsupervised and reinforcement learning so supervised learning the technique in which we teach or train the machine using data which is well labeled and unsupervised learning, the training of machine using information that is unlabeled and allowing the algorithm to act on the information without guidance. And if it is reinforcement learning, then it is part of also machine learning where an agent is put on environment and he learns to behave in this environment by performing certain actions and observing that rewards which it gets from those actions. So here is the different types that if it is unsupervised learning, the mainly it is here, the dimensionality reduction and the clustering will come. And again, sub part also shown there. And if it is supervised learning, the basic we are starting from the regression and classification. And if it is reinforcement learning, then you will have to go for the game artificial intelligence, here the skill acquisition, robot navigation and here the learning tasks. So this way it is given for that this supervised learning, unsupervised learning. The classification, regression versus classification of clustering. And here the machine learning algorithm, it may be not little bit visible to you audience, I understand because uh, it is also giving little bit from seeing here, but uh, main thing we will be coming on. These are the limitations of the machine learning, uh, whether it is related to the image recognition or high dimensional data. Means it is three, four dimensional data is there. That limitations will be there. It is continued in the next slide and how the deep learning again it is doing and it is doing the binary classification and finally to map the image if you are going for the robot and here it is the deep learning, the neural network concept is here taken that hidden layers are there to compute something and finally to predict. So input is coming and here are the hidden layers to compute some of the functions and finally to predict the data. Like that it is deep learning, the different layers may be in between. So the deep in deep learning refers to having the more than one hidden layer. I have given that it is if it is working like the brain, some of the terms of the brain is taken here and like that the different hidden layers are given and output layer returns the output data. In our case, it gives the price prediction 
what will be the predicted price suppose the airport of the origin and destination airport and departure date and air time these are the input data in all the hidden layers the different routes and the different flights and cost and discounts the hidden layers are computing and finally what price should be there for that particular source to destination of the airfare again i will skip this one i am waiting for there i will take little bit more time for that perception and what do you mean by perception multi layer perception back propagation need for text mining and here is the natural language processing so now natural language processing what we have done the part of computer science and artificial intelligence which deals the human language what the first slide and last slide i will be displaying but before that some of the machine learning algorithm in python i will have to implement and show the execution now the first task of the machine learning in supervised learning the linear regression machine learning so where one where two variables are working or two sets of variable you can say that one dependent variable value y is based on the given independent variable x so if you are taking some a class a students so that according to the height and weight so height is based on weight or weight is based on height so that is your choice you are taking which of the value is dependent on what because when we are going to say that this particular child is dependent on mother or mother is dependent on child you will have to decide at that time by your logic that this particular year this was the rate this particular year so year is the x value and that variable value y is differing for each year so the regression techniques finds out the linear relationship between x and y output one of the linear regression has done funny that which of the country has predict uh, has produced more nobel laureates and we found in another way we i am using the word we not i so that uh, one of the country has used more chocolates and from that country we are getting the more nobel laureates so that dependent variable and independent variable so it is the statistical approach for modeling relationship between a dependent variable with a given set of independent variables and it comes under supervised learning so first we will start with the simple linear regression so attempts to model relationship between two values i have taken here directly you can say this height and weight height is given in the feet and the weight and sometimes it is not matching so data but we will have to draw a line in which way it is the line will not be are up and down we will have to compute that taking all consideration of all those dependent variable <coughs> sorry in which way the height is there or in which way weight is there and which way this particular value is different for the 6 feet height what is the weight and you will see that some of the here so if it is having here 5 feet or 5 feet 5 inch height and their weight is 55 kg but another student is there he is having less than weight so they have taken here the two variables implementation we will see here so we assume that these two variables are linearly related and they have given some weight in kilograms height in meters and this way the relationship between weight and height now i have tried first in excel in which way we will have to compute because the formula have been given by mathematician simple this one i will take here 5 minutes so that linear regression formula is y equal to bx plus a yes y is the predicted value and i have taken that it is y is here so one y value will be caused for all in which way it is computed first i have taken the x height and y weight okay fine multiplying the x and y finding the x square finding the y square and which way it is completed a plus b x y equal to 
what is a and b for a and b it is given here formula in which way the a is computed in which way the b is computed finally you have computed the a and b and then you are putting those values and this way it is coming and then you are predicting the y what will be the y value and you will see that automatically that predicted y value if you have got the value of a and b and it is predicting and the linear regression line is going straight so i have checked in excel first in which way because using the built in algorithm is very easy but sometimes the external of the uh, research or phd or mtech they are asking you have used already the built in algorithm whether you have used the python tools machine learning or matlab but do you understand in which way it is done for that sake i have created i have created in that special it is the formula how to compute the a and b now again i have taken that x versus y in which way it is computed i have taken the shell wise and in which way it has computed and the formula is also shown here that in which way the cross deviation is checked and on which way the square deviation is checked for that i will be taking the variable name ssxy and ssxx so here i have taken again the x value is 0 to 9 y value is 1 to 12 but it is differing the x value is sorted from 1 to 9 and y value 1 3 2 5 7 8 8 9 10 12 so in which way we will have to draw this linear regression where y is dependent on x we are also calling x as feature vector and y as the response vector so this way i have taken the another value here taking from 0 to 19 and y value is taking from 1 to again the some values are repeated and in which way it is given in the incremented order y value is not in that and then we have drawn a plot so we have drawn a plot so how the linear regression line straight will be drawn and the formula is same the next slide it comes here here to take more time we have already discussed this line is regression line so h x i equal to v0 vx how to compute that so here we will take more time. so this is the formula without going to the mathematical details directly how this sx xy and ss xx the cross deviation sum and here the sum of a square deviation how it is computed in python first i have taken how many data are there whether it is x or y finding the mean of x and y np dot mean and np dot mean mean of x y and ss xy is what sum of here the sum of cross deviation so how it is being computed see here the formula how it is being computed here the loop is running from 1 to n y i multiplied by x i minus n multiplied by x mean and y mean in that way it is written y multiplied by x minus n multiplied by mean of y mean of x so it is sum of all those value sum of cross deviation which way the formula is given it is implemented in python and here certainly that you have already written here first that import numpy as np then you are using that np and again here the sum of the square deviation so here the formula is given here the loop is running from 1 to n xi square minus n multiplied by mean of x square so x multiplied by x Minus n multiplied by mean of x square means m x multiplied by m x and the sum of all these value. So it is the sum of a square definition and then b one you are computing first, not the b zero. B one is calculate first because b one is used in b zero. So it is what b one equal to what s s x y divided by s s x x. Sum of cross deviation, sum of square deviation. and finally you are computing this v0 equal to my minus b1 multiplied by mx which way the formula is given and then by this formula you are drawing the linear regression line here so again it is given generalize our linear model a little bit more for feature of matrix vector directly i am coming here so i have taken linear regression in python 
so again taking those value finally whole program is given at one place so first we are drawing the scatter chart so it is different dots you are telling that is the scatter chart and i am not showing that first we'll have to do more things so i have made it comment the comment lines in python are written with hash so taking the size computing the mean computing the a square of the cross deviation some of the cross deviation here some of the square deviation and then b1 is computed b0 is computed now you are taking that scatter and then in which way the value of y is predicted b0 plus b1 multiplied by x the predicted response vector for any x value what is the x value the line will go straight only and then you are plotting x comma y prediction and it is drawing the straight line so like that if it is multi linear regression suppose some of the values are having two or more features and a response by fitting a linear equation to observe data clearly it is extension of this simple linear regression because multiple predictions are there for your x1 x2 x3 x4 x5 so these are the multiple linear regression so i will be taking in that way the sum of the bank rate of interest and in which way the implied the two things i am taking that bank rate of interest is increased or decreased employment has been increased or decreased in a particular time frame so here we have taken here this formula how it is computed now the linear non linear non linear but i will come to the program we are nearer to complete i have taken this one so see there here year 2017 and it is the month here and it is the interest rate the saving account interest and it is the unemployment rate and the stock index prices so is there any correlation between these multivariates because month is there in different month there may be the different interest rate unemployment rate and a stock index rate should be predict here when the interest rate was down and unemployment rate was down and the what was the index stock index price again the two variables their index rate was down but unemployment rate was up what will be the index rate similarly for that taking these two variables and one dependent variable we can do like that here it is given you may want to check that the linear relationship existing between stock index price dependent variable and interest rate independent variable again stock index price dependent and unemployment rate independent so both the things are there we will have to check in multi regression so i have taken all those in the list of lists better to say here the all the year are here then months and then interest rate what the data i am showing here those all data taken here in that fine so here it is taken and here it is uh, better to say not the list it is here the dictionary the curly bracket is given the paired value the year and the year having that these years in a list again month is the key and these are the values interest rate is the key and these are the value and these are the unemployment rate and what are the index price rate this one now we will have to take in the data frame and from pandas you have imported the data frame and for also to draw the plot and finally you are just giving the interest rate stock index price and x label interest rate and stock index price and then finally drawing the grid also giving the chart name x axis name title name y axis name and you want to show that so it is giving here the two things a stock index price versus interest rate and a stock index price versus unemployment rate so on what decision we will go here when the stock index price was high the unemployment rate was low or high price versus interest rate the stock index price was less or interest rate was high what was the stock index price so this way we are doing the multi regression and finally we are coming to the last slide so what we can do in artificial intelligence and machine learning 
this slide is taken also from net so that in which way this machine learning this reinforcement learning unsupervised learning and supervised learning is done and finally uh, that one is speech recognition under the ai that i want to execute if the coordinators will allow me so after finishing this one the code is shared with you i have not shared code but running the any of the youtube file or any of the song file only in the first slide to open any of the web page and here to machine to response in which way the machine can response so and after that i will have to conclude the presentation finally this slogan is there no free lunch so no one algorithm can assure that it is giving the best result so as a result one should try many different algorithm for the problem while using a hold out test set of data to evaluate performance and select the winner and finally you can say in all your projects i have tested all this but my algorithm my suggestion my proposal is giving better result by all those data analytics what i have done and it is here is data science end ai machine learning and big data analytics my answer is there is no end let us begin so all these slides will be there and here uh, i will be asking the coordinator nisha if you are listening please yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so i am listening i will be sharing my screen sorry sir i can't hear you for 2 minutes more i want to share my screen yeah yeah no problem yes sir sure so okay. you will be stopping sharing or directly i can share from here yes sir you can okay, share okay fine so i have promised that it will be started from the artificial intelligence this time i will not leave the meeting minimizing only fine and starting the navigator and our conda navigator ideally because it is already code is given to so for space 2.pi and if you are listening so directly running this one the machine will be responding and what i have told to respond that will be responded it is not like any of the wizard or jadu who are you have you heard nisha yes sir have you heard what the machine has told no can you play again sir it's it's a very minimum the voice is okay so that i have increased the sound i can hear it again yeah yeah sure okay something you might have heard so it is recognizing and it is responding like that hmm, like, okay. because uh and finally finally the last slide last slide what you have shown first you know the last slide you might have heard about that this uh enjoy to relax the brain by your permission i will be taking 2 3 minutes more yeah yes sure you may okay fine sona sona Gracias. 
Not told correctly. Sapna.
we with this we reach today's uh, end of webinar and i thank mr parasnath singh for this wonderful presentation uh, he has already left due to some technical issue so i thank you sir and i thank all the attendees who have participated and joined into today's live webinar and i also like to thank united innovators our academic partner so if you or someone you know is looking for assistance with research article writing paper publication and patent filing phd assistance please visit unitedinnovators.com to know more about their services and i'd also like to let you know if you have any questions or queries you can write to webinar@ifrp.in do follow ifrp on social media to know more about our upcoming webinars thank you very much for joining in have a good day